What's happening, guys? It's your boy Charles here. And in today's interview, I have with me my good friend Lloyd Cohen. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, mate. I'm very good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, all good. All good, my man. Um, so we're going to talk today about um, how you got into the art space, how you were able to uh, successfully turn your passion um, into a thriving business. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. I wanted sort of to, to go back because, you know, I, I bring entrepreneurs onto the channel, um, creatives, and, you know, often people see kind of, um, not the finished product as such, cause we're all evolving and changing and, and, and growing, but they, they kind of think, well, I'm not sure I can do that. Um, so I wanted to go back to when you were, say, I mean, you're in your 30s now, correct? Yeah, 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 mid-30s, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's go back to, say, when you were 21. What was Lloyd like at 21? <laughs> oh, man, God. I was young and dumb, definitely. Young, dumb and drinking too much and didn't really have any direction, like, you know, I was just lost. I think like most of us, well, I guess a lot of people at that age have kind of got their shit together, but um, I, I was, I had no idea what I was doing. I was stuck in corporate work. So I started working in finance and accounting from the age of 17. So I didn't even go to college really. I did one year of college and dropped out and I went straight to work for my grandma in a finance department doing admin. And from there, I kind of like, got stuck in the machine and started building up and building up my career and that career was giving me stability so I was like kind of at this point where I was in this job at 21 I was probably I was pretty unhappy with what I was doing I was enjoying the money I was making but as you get older you realize the money's not everything and you want a bit of freedom and you want a bit of you want to be able to do do the things you enjoy and this this corporate this corporate slog uh, was kind of putting me on the back foot where I wanted to be and obviously I'd read a couple of years later well no actually around the age of 21 I'd read Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week and that was kind of like what started me started me looking for ways out but it took a hell of a lot of years after being 21 to get out of it so it's uh it's been a journey but 21 was probably around about the time I, I, I it kind of clicked in my head that it probably wasn't right for me but the fact that you read four-hour work week when you were 21 suggests that you were probably starting to get into that mindset of okay yeah or was it does it a long period to, to after honest, that yeah i mean to be honest from an early age i've been like i feel like it's been in me for for an early from an early age i remember um i don't know if you remember the back in school when you used to get the little uh fortune teller things that you fold in half um, okay yeah yeah i know you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you remember what i mean i remember when i was in school I'd made 15 of those and I was like, I'm going to go sell them. And I sold them for 25p each. And I, that, and I look back at that now because I, I completely forgot about it until my mum told me um, a few months ago. I look back at that now. It's like, well, there was clearly something there that I, I was wanting to do. And I was constantly looking for something to try and make a bit of money, which is probably why I fell into this this opportunity to get a job at 17. I was like, oh, wow, I want to make some money. I want to, I want to get started. I want to start building my life and getting a house and a family and all this kind of stuff. And that's kind of like, where I fell, but I fell in the wrong direction. Mm. Uh, so that was 21. And then fast forward to now, I'm no longer in that. So that's, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a positive in that sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think, like you said, it's, it, it takes time. It's uh, like, there's, there's no overnight success, is there? You've, you've got to, you've got to first have the, the right mindset and then it takes many years of trial and error. So yeah. um, I guess that leads me on to, um, what what got you started in terms of your entrepreneurial journey obviously it, you know when you were younger you you you, tr you tried a few things um but what what kind of age did you um did you say did you start what how has what's been your journey from from where you were to where you are now yeah so i'd say from when when i started started working i've been in corporate work I had been in corporate work for like 10 years and it was not, I think it was not until I was 25. I joined, uh, which I know you're familiar with. I joined um, an online business mastermind group 
and it was kind of that that kind of opened the door and showed me the opportunities to what I could do on my own as a business owner if I put the work in. So it was like it was from the age of twenty five really that I um I had this idea that I I literally wanted to escape escape the matrix as some people say the the corporate the corporate world the corporate slog as I call it. And, and what um, were you what were you doing? What was the what was your job? My job was accounting, so I wasn't qualified. I wasn't a qualified accountant. I was pretty much on. I was doing what the qualified accountants would do, but in accounting, it's like you, you do all the work, and then you just need an accountant who's got the qualifications to sign it. I was doing all the work, and then I was just handing it up to an accountant to sign it. Okay. So, and I was offered this opportunity to do my qualifications so many times, but I just knew that education wasn't my my thing, and I knew deep in deep in my heart that I did not want to do accounting. So I was like, I'm not going to take these three years, four years to do my um, qualifications. But yeah, it's um, it was 25 when I started this this online um, online business building course and joined a mastermind. And from there, I started dabbling, as I think most most people do in our situation. We dabble and we 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 follow the shiny shiny object and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. So yeah, tell me then, what what did you what did you try? What did you try before something stick start, start you know, first, in terms of first thing, first thing I went into was um presentation design. So like PowerPoints and all that kind of stuff, keynotes. Literally, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to find how to find clients. Um cold email was new to me. So that was kind of how I was trying to do it. I was looking on LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. It just didn't vibe with me and it didn't work. So I think I stuck at that for probably eight months. But again, like this is something you learn it's like you have to kind of stick with it and um slog it out and i was i was constantly looking for the new thing the thing that mm. i saw the others doing i was like oh i'm gonna go and do that because they're getting success but little did i know they'd actually been running that for three four years that's why they were getting their success so i did a presentation design i did web design um i had my hand uh video editing because I enjoyed doing travel videos myself. And I, I got quite good at editing videos. So I was like, oh, well, a business kind of around um, uh, the public sending in their, their video footage from going on holiday. I put together a nice little edit and sent it back. The mechanisms behind it all just didn't work. And it wasn't a market that was that, that, that was willing to um, put money, um, money forward for the service. So I, I, that got scrapped. And then I was kind of left it a bit of a lull stuck in my job again i didn't really know what to do so um it was a couple of years between trying a few different businesses i, I just i had I, I just kind of put the put um put the brake on and i just stopped everything online business from there and it wasn't until recently uh, the last few years that i picked it back up again in uh, in art and so i mean in your experience and obviously having tried a few different things would you basically start a business based on a market or based on on your on a passion you know what what's your thoughts or take on that type of um yeah passion business versus choosing the right market and going into something even if you don't particularly yeah. find it that interesting i honestly think it depends on the person um but from my perspective and the way i am and the person i am i think i need the first thing i needed was a bit of passion behind what what it was so i needed to have the passion of the art of the thing that i'm creating before i could go out and sell it that's just me though and i, I know that other people other people are more the opposite um but yeah for me I, I, looking back obviously it's a difficult one i think art technically wasn't my passion in the beginning right like, okay yeah I, i'd been in school and i'd done art in school but not since gcse and not since high school so I haven't really picked up anything. I'd, I'd done creative things. So I would do a bit of design, um, like graphic design and stuff like that. But it, I wouldn't say it was my passion until I actually picked it up again and started doing it. So yeah. I think it's it, it's 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 a, it's a different road for everyone, I think, um, in answer to your question. If something doesn't feel right, I guess the answer is it's probably not right. If it, feel, mm. if it does feel right, then, that, then that's when you should go all chips in and just literally spend every waking hour you've got trying to make it work. That's, I think that's my answer really to that. But like, it, yeah. 
yeah, I don't think there's there's a uh, there's a one size fits all answer. You know, um, I, I would typically say that um, passion t- typically comes from competence. You know, if you're if you become good at something, you may not have been passionate about it from the start, but the more you become good at it and you get praise from others, and you you know you become better at a particular skill or craft then naturally you're going to be more passionate about it, especially if it's going to make you money. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and a lot of that comes from patience then as well. So you've got to have patience before the passion. Yeah, that's that's definitely a good point. Um, and I think that's kind of what happened. I didn't have the patience in the beginning. I got older and wiser and realised I needed more patience and then kind of the patience blossomed yeah. in passion. Yeah. Well, you I guess realize, you've just made me realize that. I didn't realize that. So thanks, Charlie. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. I'm glad I could, uh, yeah, yeah. Could bring that insight. Um, yeah, I think it's, it, it's exactly, it, it's, 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 you know, you have to start something. And I think the curse of, of typically the, the entrepreneur is, is focus, isn't it? You know, we're, we're, we can get distracted by too many different things, shiny objects. Um, so I think, um, you know, you have to stick at something long enough to, to see whether it's going to work or not. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Um, okay, Lloyd, so tell me about, the, obviously, like you said, um, you tried, you tested all these different types of businesses. You had a little bit of success, but not anything, you know, longer term. Um, how did you get, how did you stumble across the sort of the art business um and how did you realize okay this is this is the right niche for me i you know i i'm actually i'm getting some success here it's a it's a funny question man because uh it's it's a, it's a funny answer because at the time when i was kind of in this lull of not knowing what to do hating my job online business wasn't working for me i'd literally just started a um a big breakup with an ex-girlfriend who i owned a house with so i just had to sell my house so i was living at my grandparents house like 20, oh, I, was, I think I was 27, 28, 28 year old living with his grandparents. So I was sat on this, I was sat on their sofa watching TV with them. I think it was probably some daytime TV thing because I wasn't working um, on that day specifically. And um, I just, I just sat there and I was doodling. I, don't, I was just doodling on my laptop. On the, on, I had an old HP laptop and I had the in front of me and I had a pen next to me and it was a Sharpie pen. And I was just doodling on it, on, on the back of it. I was like, I enjoyed doing that. So I was like, oh. so I've got myself a little sketchbook and I started doing doodles, like just little um, ink doodles on a, on a sketchbook. And I started posting them to my Instagram. I thought, I'm going to do this every day now for the next 30 days. I'm going to get a post-it note and I'm going to doodle on it every day for uh, 30 days. So I started posting that constant, consistently on social media, on, on my Instagram, knowing full well that what I was doing was like, I thought it was crap. I didn't think it was any good, but I enjoyed doing it. That was all that mattered to me at the time because I was in a pretty bad place. And uh, I started to get some good reactions. And I was like, there's something here. This uh, like People are reacting to this in a positive way that I wasn't expecting. So I was like, I've got... I just sat, and I sat down like um, a couple of months later. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try. And be an artist this is probably one of the hardest markets to make it in in the world like there's only a handful of names you can you can roll out that you know a successful artist whereas there are millions if not billions of people who are creative who are not making money from what they create so i was like this is this is this is something pretty big it might not work it might work but nothing's worked in the past so i might as well give it a go so i started doing it and i this is where the passion came and i was like oh there's some passion here and i was like i just continued doing it and it was like the consistency of showing up every single day creating something new every single day that kind of create the snowball effect I was like well this, this is great and that's kind of how it started and um and then with the marketing knowledge that i'd learned throughout um the online course the mastermind i was part of and creating other businesses i kind of i thought i'm gonna i'm gonna smash these two together the art world and the marketing world smash it together and then that's how my business formed i was like i am using marketing methods that artists have never never even heard of before like um like funnels and um uh email opt-in forms and all that kind of stuff it's not something that artists have ever been taught it's not something that um the industry really 
knows about. So I'm just going to do this. And it turns out I was the only one in the art industry that I knew of. Um, as far as I'm aware, I still were, or I still was at the time, uh, putting these marketing campaigns together for artwork. And it just absolutely boomed out of control, which was fantastic. So it started, it started from one little doodle on, my, on the back of my laptop. Uh, while I was sat on the sofa at my grandparents' house with no house, no girlfriend, and no vision of my life in the future. <laughs> well, so like I said, sometimes you have to uh, you have to reinvent yourself or start over again, don't you? To uh, to yeah, you know, you get yeah. the biggest clarity when when that happens because you feel like you're starting from nothing again. I think that's really important. It's like when you're at rock bottom, you've got no other option to go up. Like there's no other option but going like going bet to a better better place than where you are so that's i think that's kind of where it came from which i'm grateful for now at the time it was awful but now i'm I'm so grateful for it because if it hadn't been like that i don't know what would have happened so yeah no that's uh no it's interesting um so my audience has a little bit of an idea in terms of, and you know uh disclose whatever you can but I mean in terms of that business then obviously you were selling art uh was it uh, was it copies or was it originals how what was the process involved in 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 that particular business yeah I don't mind going into this because I'm actually um, I've actually released um a book about it now about how I've done it to help other artists so I don't mind going into detail about what I actually did I actually created uh, a value ladder of products so I had a low value product, which would be a, an art print. So a small art print. Um, I'd have a medium, medium level product, which would be uh, like a lot, either a larger print or a, a limited edition print. And then my high value stuff will be my original art. And my idea was to take someone from the from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder. And this is this is kind of basic um, basic marketing and funnel um, funnel kind of building um, talk. Is this if for, for any of your listeners that have been through this kind of stuff, like the Russell Brunson, all that kind of stuff. But the, the the art print at the beginning was kind of the in. So I would do marketing campaigns for a small art print, low cost, high value. So the products would be high value. I'd put everything I could into it to make like the, the physical and intrinsic value um, as high as possible. But a very small cost. They go through the funnel and um, there'll be upsells in place to bring the average ad, average order value up of the of the customer going through it. But in the end, which was the golden ticket, was I get their email address. And I have an email list of buyers of artwork of mine. I know that every single person in that list has my art in their home on their walls. Whether it's a, it'll be a small like a small print or an upsell an upsold version of a larger print of it. And I know that if I email them now, they're gonna know who I am because they've likely got my art on the wall. Um, they're gonna have remembered they've paid me before, and you know the relationship was already there and the the trust was already there. So that's kind of how it start. That's how it started. And then I do email marketing campaigns, and then to the point where I was, I, I built my list to seventy thousand people. Wow. All it would take, all it would take was to send one email out, and I'd sell an original. Like if I had an original piece of art, I would just have to send one email and someone within the list would reply back. And in some cases I'd get 10, 10 to 15 emails back. So, you know, so that was the process. And I, this is this is the whole um, issue with the art industry is it's not yet moved online. It's all pushed. Like it, the galleries, the galleries are still trying to run, run, um, from the roost so to speak so they're trying they're trying to take the commissions where they can but it's all moving online now and someone needs to someone needs to tell everyone that it no, no longer needs to be this difficult and you no longer have to pay commissions to galleries and all that kind of stuff so that's okay. that's how it's set up it was it was a, it was a funnel it was a funnel business um with paid paid marketing paid advertising um profitable on the front end and then profitable on the back end which which is and Good. Do you mind sharing um, roughly your, your the numbers that you were were able to achieve in terms of you know revenue and and stuff? It just yeah, sure. I, I think it would be very because um, the first thing you think about when it comes to to artists 
is and 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 I I I categorize music, musicians, aspiring musicians in the in oh, the yeah. same is like uh yeah the what do they say the 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 uh, it's not the broke is it the broke broke music well broke musician or the um it, it, yeah they they're the starving typical, artists that's the, the starving one that's artists, the, the that's starving it, yeah. artists yeah yeah that's the word i was after um yeah. yeah they're just you know most most artists they just they they don't make it um they just they don't make a living from it i think that's the biggest thing isn't it it's because um, and the re the reason is because they don't know how to present their artwork to an audience that's that's it they know how to create their art but they don't know how to present it in a way that's compelling for someone to purchase it that's that's the misalignment so unfortunately i managed to get that so in terms of numbers is that where you were going yes that would be great yeah i'm, I'm curious <laughs> let's get so, to the juicy stuff um within the first year i generated an email list of seventy thousand customers with um, an offer and that generated close to half a million dollars in revenue uh, with about a 60 percent uh, profit nice. margin bear in mind there was ad, ad spend in there within the 40 percent of costs so yeah it was it was substantial it changed my life it absolutely changed my life but it made me realize that wow artists do not do not have to be starving it's you know it, it was a massive light bulb moment for me so i actually took took what I'd done and given it to a handful of my friends and people that I knew, artists um, that I knew who were working in the studio that I was working in at the time. And um, I handed it over to them and they got similar results. So it's, it was crazy. Um, yeah, certainly not uh, the, the average numbers that a, a typical artist uh, would, would generate. Um, so no. tell me then, what what what's what's the traditional route for for artists you know what's been the traditional route and um or, and a, and a follow up question what what are the biggest mistakes you you're seeing that artists are make you know are making at the moment or or have made in yeah. the past okay so there's a traditional route the traditional route which i'll speak about and then there is the route that the the artists think they should take right now the, within the online world so the traditional route is Great at painting, go find gallery representation, get the gallery to re represent you. They get the footfall. So they're technically doing the, the selling and the marketing for you. They then take 50% if they sell anything. That's if they sell anything. The, the route now, which seems like everyone seems to be going down this route right now is social media, which is a complete, it's, it's a game. You're just playing a game and it's whoever spends the longest on the app wins basically who gets the engagement who gets the followers but in reality the followers and the engagement aren't really going to do anything for you unless you have something to offer so um it's you think that you're doing the right thing as an artist by posting stuff on social media when yes that's fantastic you should be doing that you should be documenting everything you're doing that is great but that's all i really think social media should be used for unless you plan on spending 12 hours of your day engaging in your audience and posting reels and stuff like that i personally didn't want to do that and i really don't feel like anyone wants to do that um even if they say they do i feel like there's part of them that wishes they had their time back so they didn't have to do that mm. that is the current route that most are taking so they're going down this route of the social media algorithm playing to the algorithm basically it's an audience that you don't control it's an audience that could literally disappear tomorrow tomorrow um you could have hundred thousand followers but if mark zuckerberg gets sent down for something who knows and first facebook and instagram gets shut down then you're no longer going to have that audience to cater, cater to which is why i was so um so involved in building an email list because i knew that the email list was it's not fully in my control because i know that it's hosted um, with the email providers but it's more in my control than an algorithm is um on social media so that's kind of where it's at. And um, the biggest mistakes, is that what you were asking about? Yeah, the biggest mistakes that you see artists make, you know, or, or up and coming artists, what what are they what are they doing um, that is, is sort of detrimental to their success? Yeah, so there's, there's, um, 
an idea I, I've come up with called Creative Branches, which as an artist, you've got a branch, which is yourself. You're kind of like experimenting, developing your skills, creating for yourself. Um, it's a process. So being being an artist, being a creator of anything, music, it could be anything. Um, a dancer, you're, there's a there's a part of your there's a part of your profession where you are creating for yourself because you're developing skills. You're seeing what works, seeing what uh, seeing what colors mix to get. You know, there's just a whole ton of stuff involved in yourself. And the, the biggest mistake is trying to sell something that's based on yourself to other people. It's like trying to sell, and I've, uh, this, um, I've said this a few times before in, in other places, it's trying to sell uh, a page of your personal diary. Why would anyone want to buy that? You know, unless, unless it resonates, which in some cases it does, I'm not saying that you can't sell that kind of stuff, unless it resonates with them, with the aesthetic or the content, then, um, that's another that's uh, that's another thing. What I what I say to artists is you need to create your secondary branch, your secondary branch of, of your creativity. You need to be creating with a market in mind, whether that's portraits or that kind of thing, with a market in mind who have a desire for something that you're creating. So the example I like to give as a landscape artist, let's say um, you're a landscape artist and you paint the landscapes wherever you go around the world, you may travel the world or whatever. Um, you paint this nice little image of this location and it's only relating to you because you went there. Whereas if you decide to sw uh, switch it around a bit and create a branch around this, a secondary branch, you could think, well, what, what can a landscape artist paint? And the example I give is a landscape artist could paint mountains. Uh, so maybe the Canadian Rockies and in the Rockies, there's three to four mountains that are very popular to climb. So what you what you would do then is you would paint these three to four three to four mountains and you would target mountain climbers and hikers and rock climbers. You know, so you kind of you're taking the you're taking your you're taking your profession, your creativity, and you're kind of tailoring it to an audience that you know who who will have a passion for it. And it's just about um, communicating that piece to the person uh, to the person that you're putting it in front of in a way that's compelling to them. So that's the biggest mistake is the social media trap. First of all, that's in answer to your question. And um, the uh, that's the biggest mistake, the social media trap. The second mistake is creating for yourself and trying to sell it. So as, an, as a, just to go a bit deeper on that, let's take Damien Hurst, for example, who he basically does what he wants and sells whatever he wants because of, because of, because of the background he's got and the years he's put in and you know, the audience he's built. Now he's able to create what he wants for himself and sell it because he's put in the work in the back end to build his audience. You know, it's like not in the ways that I'm saying, but in other ways. So whether that's media, media outlets, um, stock pieces, all that kind of stuff. Whereas we as beginner artists online trying to navigate the online world, we just need to find our, our break in, in a specific audience. That's all we need to do. And once we've got that working and we've got people coming through the door, only then can we have the freedom to be selling stuff that is personal to us. And that's kind of, that's the process um, in the beginning that most, I feel like most artists are missing out. They're just hoping that their, their work is just gonna resonate with, with people. When in reality, it's, you need to offer more in the beginning rather than um, just this piece that you've created out of out of your own self-interest really so you would you say that artists go into trying to sell art with really no business strategy or marketing strategy in mind it's just i'm creative i'm just going to put something out on a canvas and hope it you know hope it sells yeah and I, yeah i think that's that's exactly it that is that's the problem and it's it's because it isn't taught and like you go to art school they won't teach you how to sell it they won't, i don't even think they teach you how to as far as i'm aware that doesn't even teach you how to get into galleries or how to communicate with galleries how to best best present yourself to galleries i don't think that's even part of the curriculum within um within art school uh, it's all about the creative aspect and the problem with that is it i think the way that they try to do it is like the best the best of the best of the best will succeed the rest will just starve the starving artist and I don't think that's fair because there is there is literally a market 
for everyone's art that you just need to tailor it in the right way. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, um, you know, the great thing is with, with, with the internet now, you know, you've got the option. You don't always need to use the, the, the galleries. You, the middleman can be cut out almost. It's just, like you said, I think the um, artists, they spend probably too much time on the creative and not enough time on actually, or how am I going to market this business or who am I even um, trying to, to, to attract? Um, yeah. So in terms of then, let's just delve a little bit further in, like if you are an artist, you know, how much time should you be spending on the creative versus, you know, the marketing and, 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 and the business strategy? Um, because, I guess we're probably all guilty of focusing on the thing that things that we enjoy versus the things that we have to do. Um, so like terms of maybe give me a, a, a percentage of um, creative versus or, uh, marketing strategy. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning, was, this is going to be controversial because <laughs> in the beginning, this is, this was my, this was mine. It was roughly split 90, 10, 90% not creating, actually building the business, 10% creating. That's just in the beginning to get it working, like to get something out there that people will actually like. Um, that's once you like you have to like. That this is when you know what you want to present to the world, and you know what you want to actually put out there, like because once you've got something you know you want to put out there, or a collection of artwork or something like that, you've done the creation. The job is now to sell it, so you should be spending ninety percent of your time trying to sell what you've already created, and then dabbling in. Uh, bits and pieces in between for the te- the other ten percent. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's some valuable advice there because I think probably if uh, most artists were honest with themselves, that they would those those numbers would be flipped. <laughs> They'd be spending ninety yeah. percent on creative and ten percent on marketing. Um, yeah, and yeah, I don't think that's going to lead to to many sales. Um, I think uh, another way to uh, another way to do it is for every week you you're creating the collection like obviously it takes different lengths of time depending on what artwork you're doing but every week you want to be spending eight weeks creating something around it to be able to get it in front of people whether that's even just cold dming people like even like in the simplest simplest ways just cold dming people trying to sell it that way like that's such a simple way and like yeah you'll get a hundred no's but you might get one yes in the end Mm. Mm, no, like I think that's I think that's good advice. Um, is there apart from obviously you know you've talked about um, building that funnel, building that email list, um, any other things that you've tried to that that have increased your your art sales? Um, I mean, I'm kind of thinking, you know, is there value in creating another uh, media that isn't directly related, like for example, a YouTube channel where you're maybe talking about lifestyle, but obviously you're an artist and you can link that back to, to, to what you do uh, just to grow that audience. Any other things that you found work quite well um, online? Um, so I've not gone down the route of YouTube. I've not really, since, since I've found my success with that, I've not really used social media to sell it. I'm not really too sure where to go with this one, Charlie. No, no. So it's, it's I'm, I'm, I was, it was worth. Yeah, I'm. I'm just curious just to see. Um, I don't know if you know any other artists um, that have gone down that route. I guess it really depends on what's right for you. You know, maybe and correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, Lloyd. You don't want to spend all your time on social media trying to to constantly trying to drum up awareness. You you've built yeah, that so, funnel yeah. and that, that system that works for you that then gives you the freedom. To, to to focus on other areas and enjoy your life and yeah so i guess it all comes down to what you want like if you're a people person you may be best fitted to go work on market stalls in city centers you know in these craft fairs and actually communicate with people face to face personally for me i didn't want to do that which is why i didn't go down that route now i have friends uh, in the art industry that do that very successfully they outsource multiple uh, they actually they, they sit, uh, every weekend they'll sit on their stall and then in other cities on that same weekend they've got people working for them selling the same prints and the same art same um, style of artwork for them so they've got like five stores open every weekend in these craft fairs 
So that's one way to do it. Um, I mean, Etsy and these self-contained platforms, I call them self-contained because you host and you take payment, you host your work and you take payments all, include, um, all included within it. So these, um, I've got another friend who's doing really well on that as well as Amazon Makers. There's, um, there's loads of opportunities out there to sell your stuff online. Whether you want to do it online and not be face to face with your clients and only be face to face with original artwork, which is what I ended up doing in, in the end. So when I, um, I hand delivered artwork all across the country now to actually see my collectors in person, uh, that was the only interaction I wanted with um, with my customers face to face, only the original artwork um, collectors. So the, I think anything outside the social media spectrum like etsy like um amazon ebay um ebay is even one i've heard has has worked really well it's all about finding the market first like all of these we can talk about these platforms we can talk about these ways of selling your art um all day every day but what all it comes down to really is having a piece of artwork that resonates with a specific audience once you get that right like even posting it to social media will probably work you just have to know who it is you're you're um creating for in the beginning on your secondary branch yeah no that um that that makes perfect sense i think um yeah um so obviously we've talked about you know the route you've taken uh what what artists can do or the mistakes that that they've made uh in particular in order to sell art um talk to me a little bit about your your latest um venture lloyd and obviously you've you're, and I don't know if you're you're still selling art, but you've 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 made a transition to actually now teaching people how to sell art online. Um, so yeah, talk to me a little bit about that business, um, your plans for that, um, and what you're looking to achieve um, by by doing that. Yeah, so um, it's been long in the making. I've hit the point now where I've got freedom of time. Um, I am still selling my art, not as intense as I was because I don't need to anymore. My efforts are now focused on trying to help other artists because I honestly feel like there should be no reason now um, with the tools available to us, the online world as it is, there's no reason why a, a talented artist cannot make a living and quit their job and go full force into their creativity. So I've been, I spent um, the end of last, uh, the last um, six months of last year writing a book it's called the artist freedom formula so i've um that's now been released and off the back of that i'm going to be creating a lot of content around other aspects so the um the book basically goes through the model i used and the model i've shared with uh, my close artist friends who have also used it and got the success from it um we've had 800 book sales so far which is fantastic so there's right. 800 artists there's 800 artists there that we can potentially help and it's growing every single day um which is fantastic we've got a, a community um where we all hang out as well and i'm doing uh, i'm going to be offering coaching as well so i want to i want i want to give people the best opportunity to get something in place to help them escape this starving artist mindset and actually help them get their artwork out there into the world online. So yeah, yeah that's, that's where I'm at with that. That's nice. That's great stuff. I, um, yeah. So any, any aspiring artists out there or anyone looking to, uh, increase their sales then yeah, go check Lloyd's stuff out. We'll obviously link to it in the, uh, in the show notes and, uh, yeah, it obviously you're, you're, on, you're on social as well, which we'll, 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 give you the details for as well. Lloyd, I wanted to do a little, uh, to, to wrap things up, uh, just three um, quick fire questions, very random questions. I thought I'd just add it into the mix. Um, and uh, yeah, be curious to get your, uh, <laughs> your answers on it. So question one, all right. Um, would you rather have a million dollars in the bank today or twenty thousand dollars a month for life and why a million in the bank today so i can invest i can invest in assets um appreciating assets and i can go full force and build out a 
huge community and platform for artists to strive and sell their art. Yeah, good. I like that answer. Um, question number two, multiple passports or multiple homes? Passports, no brainer. Okay. I need to get off this grid. I need to get on more grids. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. And third and final question, obviously the most important question, iced coffee or hot coffee? Hot coffee, 100%. Black. No yeah. sugar, no milk, just black, hot. 100%. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, you might you might change your mind. If you go to hotter climates, you may be uh, yeah. if you're traveling well, around. Yeah, that's it. We'll have to see with that. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, Lloyd. Well, um, uh, where can my audience uh, find you? Um, yeah, if you could just share your details, that would be great. Yeah, and sure. uh, any aspiring artists that want to check Lloyd's stuff out, you should definitely go ahead and do that. Yeah, sure. So if if you want to check out the book I've mentioned, it's book.artistfreedomformula.com. My artwork is on my social medias. So it's Lloyd Cohenen. That's one profile. That's where I'm posting most of my information, product stuff. And then there's Lloyd Cohen and Art. That's Instagram. And then my website is LloydCohenen.com, spelled C O E N E N. It should be in the show notes. So. Great yeah. stuff. All right. Thanks, Lloyd. Appreciate you coming on the, uh, on the channel. And uh, until well done, next man. time, guys. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah. We'll see you next time. Cheers.